welcome. My name is Daniel. I'm a brother of another mother of Ellen DeGeneres who comes to celebrate her word lifted up from Canada. And uh, long may she prosper, Ellen, if you ever hear of me. My name is Daniel, and I've always been a fan of her kindness. We all need much more of that. For kindness alone is the language that the deaf can hear, the blind can see. Everyone understands what love is, and everyone in the world wants unconditional love, and very few ever want to give it. That is the paradox. So welcome, it's time to come and sail away by sticks. Uh, and as we do, we will climb to a new place. And so welcome, and love from love, or from hope. Know therefore that these are the days of Ellen DeGeneres' truest faith, and they are being exalted into our great beyond and far, far beyond infinity that lies far beyond our most loving imaginations so that we must and will be able to awake to not only the, the truth that there is no darker gross darkness than the ignorance of love alone, as William Shakespeare rightly said, but that we can hopefully welcome together the dawning of a brand new wonderful age of kinder kindness uh, from that we learn from people like Ellen so that such charity divine can become like a supernova all over the darkened circle of the earth in order to lead us towards the Lord's sapphire sparkling sea of his everlasting forgiveness that is ahead so let all believers of our lion and the lambs arising kingdom of age now come together in love's unity of peace uh, and let us all sail away as we set an open course for the virgin sea because we all need to be set free so we can be free to face the life of love that is ahead of us and once on board naturally Ellen's most passionate flowing love makes her the cap captain naturally in this voyage. But her good news is that we can all be first mates, so it's a good consolation prize. So please climb aboard and we'll search for tomorrow on every shore for love's most precious gold that's at the end of this rainbow. Uh, and once our hearts are shining again, by love's brightest fire, then we can all carry on as we look to the foretold sea of the Lord's forgetfulness, as we celebrate the reflections and the waves that sparks our memories of his living word of Romans 4, 7, where he strongly says in the word of God, blessed are those whose iniquities are forgiven, who journey over his sea of his most forgiving forgetfulness. And so the end time story goes that until now we somehow missed out uh, on love's brightest pot of gold because many were spitting at his rainbow of love. So from here on out for the rest of the time, let us all try to be kind to one another so that the it'll finally become the time of love's greatest shining glory of his most radiant peacefulness as we carry on Eden is ahead of us as the prophet Joel foretold and as we come sail away on the Lord's living waters of love we shall all need to be giving Ellen a real big hug for a gathering of angels is appearing above our heads and by the Lord's mercy that shall endure for us forever. His angels of love shall sing us a brand new song, a new song of hope, a song, uh, and this is what they shall sing. They shall sing as the rainbow flares uh, for ourselves, and it can then expand. Explode. Uh, and it can explode from an explosive wind of love's most passionate blessedness. So then the angels shall sing, come sail away, come sail away, all stars of our living star of stars. So come sail away with love for all of creation, only then can clearly come to see that somehow, somehow over our most beautiful rainbows of our love's innermost transformation, somehow over that rainbow, shall we be able to finally take the biggest step beyond our 
past spiritual failures. So these are the most exciting days. Set sail your your uh, sails of love and let us all go towards Ellen's truest truths that we should all be the rainbow of loveliness that even brightens the grayest skies ahead. For the greater our storms, uh, the brighter shall our rainbows of loving hope become as they shine as our star of Bethlehem, as we use his love alone as our brand new north star that could never steer any of us wrong. For he is the Lord God of all mankind, uh, and he is the good shepherd over all the flocks of man as John 10, as he predicted for these latter days. So let the jubilee of jubilees begin, for the wind of love is full, and the tide of love's very best blessings are with us all, so that we can finally learn that none of our souls would ever have any rainbows if our eyes never had any tears. So trust the written word of Romans 8.28, uh, so that we can understand that truly all things have worked together for good for all of his loving children of his love according to his purposes. And I thank you very, very much for uh, coming. And in this hour of uh, putting a big, uh, how you say, a, a big um, uh, magnifying glass over... Uh, uh, the words of um, Ellen. Uh, it's time that we can hear the birds sing again as we sail away and all we got to do is have hands to receive and have hands to let the veil be ripped. And if we will let the veil of be ripped, then miraculously, just like that, we can truly set sail to a faraway place where we can all live together in loving kindness. Days when we can all say as Chief Joseph of the Nez Perce, that we can fight no more forever, that we would rather love than fight, that we would rather have peace than war. And so in these days of the Lord's power of love, shining through the words of Ellen DeGeneres, it is time for us to glory in all that the Lord has made and within all people that he has fashioned by his own loveliness made into that image and lovely are we. He makes no junk amongst men. And so it's time to realize more than ever before that the biggest problem of love within these days of much manifesting in time prophecies is, is that in an unloving religious society, it has taught all the human race to stare at people with their eyes of religious condemnation instead of looking at them as having been fearlessly and gloriously made in the image of love who is the Lord God of hosts, our living victory within all people absolutely of love who want to be victorious as they begin thriving by love instead of just surviving. It's not good enough to survive anymore. So if we want to all have a most beautiful rainbow of peace over all of us, then we got to just keep on trying to have more loving attitudes unto others by love's most golden shining kingdom age rule. So don't forget, please, that in these days of the glorious star of God's love shining down upon Ellen DeGeneres, let the wise now realize that there truly is a great pot of spiritual gold at the end of this rainbow for peace to come between all people. For he is the priceless pearl of great reward and the treasure of excellence, and he is the excellence of treasure and all that can be ours. So no matter who or what people might rightly or wrongly think, uh, in the end, so can it be that all people can begin loving themselves once they realize that our love of the ages has always loved us long before we have ever loved him. And only by loving ourselves can we then truly love others. And so know that these are the very last days for all of us to try our best to remember that true equality is what it is. And it has always been what it's been. So praise he 
Give praise unto our Lord, who is the blessed, the beloved, and the adored, as his rainbow promise uh, comes forth of love, shining more vibrantly than any other rainbow of his most loving mercy. For these are the days for all of us to beat our swords uh, of judgmentalism into sickles of no condemnation over all people walking in the spirit of love. For this is love's foretold end time of love's harvest. And as all people respect that flag of love that I just pulled down because the veil has now been broken through uh, during this age of the Lord's arising age of his lion and his lamb uh, and the name of a lion's family is a pride so learn that fully and so he wants us to be utterly full of love's greatest glory and so in these days of elijah the truth shall set us all free from looking through veils of spiritual distortions like we were still looking through a glass darkly when it is clearly foretold in daniel 12 in the latter days people could finally receive the truth of love so that they could shine as the star of love who is first sent his light shining unto us and so these will become days of this pride's uh, flag of the glory of peace, hope, and love. Uh, so let that flag wave, for in these days that is what will come unto us. As we put out vibes of love, hope, and peace, that is what we shall receive back. So come sail away and hear now about the total equality of our shining sun of peaceful love. Uh, and so, as that noted comic, Ellen once said, it's become clear to see that life is about balance, she says, uh, the good and the bad, the highs and the lows. And Ellen DeGeneres additionally says that everyone happy with our messed up uh, uh, word uh, and our messed up wor world should procrastinate now so that they don't keep putting it off by ignoring the loving changes that they themselves want to see in this world so that they should be transformed by. So in her stand-up comedy act, she always asks, so do we really have to know who is gay and who's straight? Uh, can't we just love everybody and judge them by the car they drive? Because she adds that it's now the time when we should be starting to love each other for who they are and let them love who they want without any condemnation. And by the fluttering dove of love, that spirit of prophecy now comes forth as the most regal eagle of the eons to bring assurance not only to Ellen but to all saluting that flag. Uh, assurance of our Lord of love's bottomless love unto absolutely all flesh as the prophet Joel rightly foretold that would be coming in these latter days unto everyone breathing in love's most forgiving breath of a multitude of brand new fresh kingdom age dreams that are arising as a, a, a sunburst uh, as a storm of light in the blackness of our uh, fleeing darkest darkness and as the age arising of the lion and the lamb roars in like great waves of his most blessed living water that bringer of overflowing hope for all that are straight gay or walking sideways for everyone he gives hope uh, that his hope shall be upon all of us. For that most majestic roaring lion of Zion is roaring louder than ever before his endless love for each and every one of us. And he now says unto all of us that as it was in the beginning, it's time that we realize his love is as infinity and the light thereof just keeps shining brighter and brighter beckoning each of us and so don't be a ostrich don't stick your head in in a, a hole in the ground there is light at the end of the tunnel but we got to make like a flamingo and we need to be proud of the beauty that our lord god has set within us for us because he is love who lives in us and so he, he now says that as it was in the beginning, so shall it be at the end. For the gross darkness of all unloving ways shall indeed now begin fleeing away as if its deathfulness depended upon it. 
Hello, my name is Daniel, and to my very own shame, I have to admit and confess that for over 50 years, I'm almost 61 now, uh, I was nothing but a religious racist, and I was nothing but a spiritual bigot who condemned always people of any other persuasion other than my own, uh, condemning them of eternal condemnation uh, over that, especially that flag. My God, I was spitting on it. But it came to pass that my bitter and most unforgiving man-made religion was then suddenly turned inside out and wiped away by our, our king of love's enlightenment of his very own glory. And as his heavens exploded within dreams and open-eyed visions that he gave me, all of a sudden I saw that the most awesome thunder of his very own peacefulness was then shaking the heavens so I could hear it. Uh, and it, that is what he was sending unto the earth. And then I figured out that if the, our Lord of love over all flesh really doesn't mean what he says in his word about forgiveness, then all of our sins that have been labeled as sin, uh, if, if, if they weren't wiped away, as he says, then he would be a lie, liar and his Bible would never be worth uh, believing again. But he is truth. And therefore, he declares unto all of us that he'll be our everlasting father and be the Lord God of all of us uh, during this extraordinary new kingdom age time of new hopes as he forgives all of our wretchedness that has existed within our sin's ugliest sinfulness for each and every one of us. So by his spirit of prophecy, he is now saying to all of those of all faith or none at all, he is saying that I shall be your Lord over all of my children of love, and I will forgive all of your imagined sins, uh, real or imagined, all except for the unforgivable sin of letting my brightest light of love within you to wax cold. Know ye not that those who love are born of God and know me and born again because I am love, 1 John 4, 7. And so let all my wise children of uh, endless peace, uh, let them celebrate, for it is written that our living truth now and always declares his love unto all of us uh, by telling everyone without exception that even though our sins have been as red as blood he will only see us as being as white as snow as Isaiah 1 18 proclaims and for that reason it puts a smile on my face because the foretold latter day of the shattering of the power of the holy people now comes as Daniel 12 7 has proclaimed for in this hour, God's word reopens. God's word was only closed until the time of the end, Daniel 12, 9. For the message of Malachi 3, 1 had to come uh, uh, to prepare the Lord's way, or else he would be kept in reserve in heaven and could not return, as Acts 3, 21 predicts. And so now comes forth the explosive truth that instantly destroys all man-made religion, exactly as Jeremiah 1.10 and Haggai 2.2 predicted. For we are angels or demons by choice. That is what we are. God said that all the creation was, would be groaning with great uh, expectation for the revelation of who we are. And he said that we are gods in John 10. And I tell you truly, the first is last, the last are first. And the glory of the Lord's latter house shall be greater than that of the former. And that's why the Bible says we shall be as the angels, neither male nor female in the great by and by, because that's exactly what we are. And so it's time that the Lord now pulls down the mountains and lifts up the valleys so that the great brotherhood of man may finally unite as the kingdom age prophecy shows. Uh, and he's finally, finally bringing forth his written promise to tear down all, absolutely all kingdoms of man's imaginations that haven't built correct, been built correctly upon 100% of his unconditional love that he has always had for absolutely all of his children. And this is the foretold rest, restoration of Acts 3.21 and Acts 17.11. Truly, all things are restored by his kingdom age promise. And it is a promise of 
equality. It is a promise of the Bible's truest truth. And that did start consuming me so much more that I ended up, I had to end up quit condemning everyone uh, that wouldn't stand under that flag, uh, under the flag that I could imagine. And it didn't matter what flag I'm talking about. I, I hated people under the pride flag. But all flags, I, I realize that all people are forgiven exactly like me, uh, unless they commit the unforgivable sin of being like a frog, letting their love slowly uh, burn away and go out their life. Uh, because you put a frog in a pot, turn up the temperature just right, and next thing you know, he doesn't even realize it. He, he, he's a dead duck, cooked goose. It's so gradual, he doesn't even realize he's cooking. And so now it's time to understand that the correct iron-clad promises of God for all of mankind wasn't just given by our Lord of hope and peace and love just to the Christians as they claim the new covenant only for them alone when it was correctly written to all mankind so that in the end days Isaiah 54 3 would come to pass that Israel has now inherited all mankind and as Isaiah 62 2 says God has appointed a new name for the house of Israel and their name he has given is Chrislam because he has invented he has because Israel with the covenant having been given they have inherited all mankind and in these days these are the days when all men will uh, come forth and hear the words of Jeremiah 32 27 as the Lord declares once again I am the Lord God of all mankind and for that reason, that's why Christ promised in John 10 that in the latter days, he also would become the good shepherd over all mankind. And so know very well that in these latter days, uh, that if the Lord God will never condemn uh, he, any people according to his own word, if their love is alive, that's why Jesus said about born again, you can't even tell. It's like the wind, you don't know where it's been blowing but you must be as little kids with your love alive as a bird not as a now not standing in the land of the walking dead not having a form of godliness of love and denying the power thereof so leave the land of the walking dead dare not have your love become uh, just a noun anymore it must be as a verb when we were as children uh, and then I came to see how hypocritical uh, it would I would have to be to keep condemning born-again people by the definition of 1 John 4, 7. Born-again people like, like uh, Ellen, the generous, happy, caring, kind people who have their love moving as a child. For it is written that all those who love according to, to that definition of 1 John 4, 7. They are people just like Ellen, so that all the Ellens of the world uh, can realize they are born again by God because they love, and it's moving, and it's passionate, and because God is love. And in this hour, praise God, he's now pouring out his spirit upon absolutely all flesh, as the prophet Joel foretold. Uh, for these are, in these latter days, the time for the velvety voice of our living word of God to come forth once again and to resonate uh, as his, with bringing his very own message of Malachi 3.1 so that we can understand that uh, his very own word of love says to all of his beloved under the rainbow flag of pride that he is their beloved and they are his beloved just as Hebrews 8 and Jeremiah 31 declares and then that carpenter of the ages uh, then he roared much louder than he ever did before as he said to all people under the pride flag with childlike love that he shall write unto all of them his law and his love upon their hearts and he says and all of them shall know me from the least to the greatest as long as their love is alive as a child and none of them shall ever need to be taught of me anymore says the Lord God and by his spirit of prophecy the Lord now declares his kingdom age truth his truest one so he now says that if my kingdom ages new covenant promise was not over absolutely all people of love instead of just my loving Christians uh, as they all wrongly imagine 
then I would be a hypocrite, says the Lord God, and my word would only be an unloving lie, only worthy of the pits of hell. For it's everlasting gospel truth, saith the Lord, that if my promises were not given to all loving people, walking with my spirit of love, as the book of Romans says, without any condemnation, then I would clearly have favorites among my children, and such bias of such unloving uh, and uh, lack of love would clearly make me, says the Lord God. It would have made him into being a respecter of his very own creation. And then, he says, and then I would be a sinner by my very own word of James 2.9. For it is written by my spirit that if anyone, including me, no one is above the law, uh, that if anyone, including the Lord God, favored any others over any other people, anyone doing that would be committing a sin according to the word of God. And if any uh, one thinks he condemns uh, all, all under the beautiful flag of the pride, they have a God who is a false God, who is a sinner committing the word against his own word. Uh, and therefore, since the law of love is for absolutely all people, including the Lord God Almighty, he is not above his own law. As he says, he has never loved uh, anyone, uh, is anyone over man-made religions they can't see that he loves everyone everyone therefore that believes that crud uh, says daniel only has a desolate unloving heritage as isaiah 49 rightly predicted and so it's clearly evident in this time as all spiritual racisms uh darkest gross darkness predicted uh, to be over all people in Isaiah 60, as it is now finally destroyed by the Lord's most radiant and glorious light of love, says our majesty of majesties, for I am the shining sun of righteousness, who is now arising by my very own living word, uh, with much healing being brought under my whitest wings of my fluttering dove of love. And I, Daniel, Ellen's brother of another mother, I have to add that such freedom of love that's only found in love is allowably forgivable and biblically permissible for any sin. Uh, whether it's a gay or straight sin is not important, any sin, uh, because he, that promise is over all loving people of the Lord who are walking with love's spirit, trying to keep kindness alive in their heart. How many people are never kind enough to even give me one like? Uh, that says a lot to me about them. But many are to be much more pitied than censored. And so, such is our Lord of Love's iron-clad promise of his living word. For know ye not that a constant state of divine forgiveness has been biblically over absolutely all flesh, as it is foretold in Jeremiah 31, and as Hebrews 8 spells out, for forgiveness is the Lord's most magnificent sphere, uh, since none of us uh, committing the unforgivable sin will be ever judged for anything bad that we've done, uh, just as it is said. And so love from love, hope from hope, and peace from peace, from unto all, saluting that glorious star of God's love, the shining as his blinding love of forgiveness over everyone who's proudly standing under that rainbow pride flag uh, of our roaring lion of Zion. Um, and so know that in this hour, Ellen has always understood that our majesty of majesties has never had anyone keeping their love alive as it is written uh, without his inspiration. And so uh, Ellen laughs and says that we all need to accept who we are unless we're a serial killer. If you're a serial killer, don't do it. But then she said on more serious note that real divine beauty is all about us being comfortable in our own skins. It's all about knowing uh, who and who you are. And the true beauty is not related to your, the color of your hair or the color of your eyes. True beauty, she says, is about being a loving human being. Uh, guarding your principles and letting love be your moral 
compass. So she urges everyone to fan their inner flames of love and to, so that they can become a wildfire that we can cast into the world. And such, no doubt, of a blazing inferno will cause love to change the earth one heart at a time, as Ellen says. So come on, people, she says, smile on your brother. Everyone try to love one another because what the world needs now is love, sweet love. And I know that love is a battlefield, but boogie on all ye people of love's brightest, most fervent passion, uh, says Ellen, because uh, they're going to make it after all. So celebrate the good times. Come on. And then Ms. DeGeneres said that we all need to follow uh, after our love's passion so that we would stay true to ourselves and never follow someone else's path unless you're in the woods and lost and then you see a path and then you, well, you better uh, follow that. But it's pretty easy to tell that Ellen's comic genius uh, has always kept her love alive one smile at a time, and she hasn't allowed her love to wax cold uh, since she says that uh, the values that she stands for is honesty, equality, kindness, compassion, and the golden rule of loving all, everyone the way that we want to be treated and helping others in need. And she added that we need more kindness, more compassion, more joy, more laughter as we all walk through life. And then she correctly added that it's our challenges and obstacles that all gives us layers of depth that makes us interesting. And the fun, then the fun can happen. No, no, it's not fun when bad stuff happens, but it, it kill, builds our character. If it doesn't kill, kill, kill us, it makes it stronger. So she said that the idea of believing in God gives her much support, and for that cause she has always held the faith of love that there is a higher power uh, and an intelligence that's bigger than us that we really can rely on. So it's not just us thinking that we're the only ones in control of everything. But she warned all of her sisters and brothers of other mothers that the world is full of lots of fear and a lot of negativity and a lot of judgment. And she said, I just think people need to start shifting into joy and happiness. As corny as it sounds, we need to make a shift. And nor could Ellen, Helen, Ellen keep on from confessing that she's been become much more compassionate because of discrimination that's come from unloving religious people, always condemning the vast majority of people around them. So she says that it's time that we all need to see that when God said, let there be light, there was light. There was still nothing, but you can still see it a whole lot better. So let's learn a lesson that when God sends light, it's still going to help us somehow. We might not figure it out. Love you.